this is our 3D printed boat. And in today's video, we're going to show you how it was designed, 3D printed, put together and waterproofed. So stay tuned and see how it was done. So this is our model of our fiberglass hull in Fusion 360. You can see it has a very narrow hull and that's so it's streamlined and efficient, but it's not very stable and it will also require a keel. This is our 3D printed test boat that we've designed. And you can see compared to the last model, it's a lot wider uh, base, which makes it more stable and it won't require um, a keel. The boat is made up uh, of 10 parts and it's printed in ASA plastic. Um, it's been designed with um, several features in mind. So at the back of the boat, you have the hole there for the motor pods um, and the motor pods will be in the water connected by a steel rod that will turn. The flange, which you see highlighted, that's where the lid will go and the screw holes. And the second flange here, that's where the deck will go and the screw holes there allow us to mount extra components and make changes as time goes on. Now you can see the servo mount. Um, this will be printed on a separate piece of plastic and on the back there will house the servo and in the stand in the middle that will support the motor pod. And then finally, if we give it a swivel, you can see the stand underneath that just makes it uh, easy to rest the boat and to work on. Okay, so after months of designing the boat on Fusion 360, we finally had a model. Uh, we then spent the next month printing it out. The reason being is that we have 10 of these sections. Each of these sections takes a day. And then for the lid, we have five sections and each of those sections takes a day. And of course, with 3D printing, um, we normally come across a, a few obstacles. Such as printed out too hot, wrinkles on the prints, warping, cracking, and generally incorrectly printed out parts. One of the biggest problems that we had was warping. It was a major issue. We tried lots of different ways to improve the warping and we finally did get some really good parts. One of the issues of this was that the parts have cracks in and those cracks obviously make the boat harder to waterproof. Okay, so if we turn this piece over, I've marked the areas here where, um, where it's warped. It's warped along the edges. And of course, if we're going to be sticking this together for our boat, you can't have uh, all these pieces that are warped. You can see on here, got crack there got more areas where it's cracked and the cracking will be caused by the warping. So there are three things that we can do to improve the warping. The first thing is to put our printer in a homemade IKEA enclosure and this means that we can increase the ambient temperature around the print and hopefully prevent the warping. That being said I did end up with small gaps in my enclosure and the small drafts um, did actually make the warping worse. So once I put tape uh, over the gaps, um, we had a much better print. Secondly, before you start printing, make sure the temperature in your enclosure is as hot as possible. And the longer that you leave the print bed heating up, the more even surface temperature it's going to have. And finally, you want to have as much uh, adhesion between the print and the print bed as possible. And to do this, I did try lots of sprays and tapes, but those didn't work. So instead, I just ended up increasing the extrusion width for the first layer, um, and that did help um, provide a much better bond. When you're printing off lots of different parts to get the settings right, I'd recommend writing on each print what the settings were, so you don't end up with lots of parts not knowing how they were printed. After all the uh, trial and error, we finally got our prints. So this is the most exciting part uh, of, the, of the job, I think, is seeing if all these parts print and 
Some of them aren't perfect, some of them have warping, but because I'm going to probably eventually reprint these sections when I modify them, we can, we can deal with that later. So, the screws arrived yesterday, which is about the most exciting thing that could happen during lockdown. So let's get to it. Just realised the mistake I made. I didn't actually order enough nuts. So to put these two pieces together, we need to put screws through these holes in the middle. Um, but because the surface is angled, there's no surface to for the bolts to line up against. So I've got these small red spaces that I've printed and those will go on the end of the screws and help us put it, to, put it together. Let's start off. Oh, and some, of, some of the holes are a bit tight. Getting correctly sized holes printed is normally quite tricky. So you can sometimes alter the X, Y com size compensation in your slicer um, or depending on the hole, you can drill it out afterwards. This is one of the best examples of warping. We can see here, we've got a good join. There it bows out where it's warped on the edges and then it bows in again at the top. You can see it well on the bottom. It bows out and in and then out and in again. So actually what you're just seeing now, this piece was actually uh, incorrect. As you can see, it hasn't got any holes in there or there. So I'm actually going to have to get the drill and drill those. Um, but for now, we'll carry on. So what I will say about the design is we've designed it so we can take it apart, print up new pieces and stick, and stick it back together. So really keeping it waterproof without gluing it. Um, so this is why you see these channels here and this is so we can stick O-ring cord in it and it will compress against the other piece and create a waterproof seal. Or at least that's the theory. When we create the boat in Fusion 360, um, you have to design it with 3D printing in mind. So when I initially started doing 3D printing, I wanted to just build the whole thing as a one 3D print. But then actually you have to think about how it's going to be built. So take this piece, for example, if you print it like that, well, this piece just has nothing to support itself. So unless you print supports, this piece is going to collapse. So instead, when I want to print um, this barrier across here, the print has to go on the bed that way, so it can print up. But then if you want an overhang here, you can print off to maybe, that's a 45 degree angle, you can print off maybe 45, 50 degrees, maybe even more, 55. But as soon as you get past this, if you're gonna have a, a straight you know, uh, overhang here, you have to print off supports for it. Um, so you really do have to think about how it's going to 3D print and what things you may have to just print off in different parts and, and stick and bolt together. When it comes to waterproofing the parts, because it's warped and some layers have shifted and they're not the perfect, um, we could acetone vapor smooth it, but uh, I don't like doing it in big pieces like this. So I'm going to use some clear coat spray and then we'll try and just fill the gaps with maybe some silicone sealant or some, or some super glue and see how that works. For the pieces that didn't have any holes in, I did attempt to drill them, but in the end this didn't work out, so I just printed off the part again. One of the other things that you have to take into, con take into consideration while designing is actually making sure everything fits together properly. Uh, for example, you know where you've drilled your holes, can you actually access the screws and things like that? And, Sometimes actually, you find that when, when you're designing, you do something, print it out and then realise, oh, you forgot actually, you can't get to the screw beneath or something like that. Okay, okay that's looking better. Oh, not too bad, hey? This section here, there are no screw holes. So we'll need to reprint that, but not, I mean, it's not perfect by any means. There's quite a bit of warping, but it's coming together. Now for the lid. 
Now, I was thinking that it was a bit tedious to have to do this every time for the lid, but we've taken the lid off in, in sections, and it's going to take me a lot longer to design some fancy hatch for the lid. So, for the time being, sometimes the simplest method is the best. There's a slight problem with this part of the lid. You can see that it bows out here. It should be a bit flatter, but what's happened is that because of the cracks along that part of the 3D print, the holes are misaligned. So consequently, um, the holes don't line up. The holes in the boat don't line up with the holes in the lid. So we're going to waterproof the boat um, and to do this we're going to use some clear coat spray because it's made out of ABS we can use the spray and it has acetone in it and it's going to just slightly um, melt and bond the, the plastic together. So we're going to use this spray, um, it's pretty noxious so we're going to put our, spray, um, put our mask on and um, the door is open for ventilation as well. Okay, so we've just finished the spraying. We'll leave that for a few hours now, just to uh, set. Um, if you become a bit overzealous with using the spray, you will get some actually drip marks. So you might not be able to see, but down here we've actually got a few. So I think I was a bit keen in making sure these components were waterproof. The edge of the 3D prints should be waterproof, but of course we still have these gaps um, in between which aren't waterproof. Now. When I designed it, I used an um, O-ring during the gaps, so you can see maybe there, you've got the O-rings that line the edges of the 3D prints where they come together. Uh, but because there was warping on the prints, the, the gap is bigger than the O-ring allows for waterproofing. So basically, to solve this, I'm going to take it apart, um, get rid of any old silicon sealant, and put some big thick beads of silicon sealant along the edges, bolt it together and then wipe off the excess and then hopefully you should have a waterproof boat. <clears throat> Before I applied the silicon sealant when taking the boat apart, I did actually spray it with the second coat of clear coat spray just to make sure that all edges were waterproof. And then as you can see now, I applied the silicon sealant. And there we have it, our finished boat and it floats. If you like this video and want to find out more, then hit subscribe. In future episodes, we'll be talking about how the electronics was installed, how the motor pod was made, and topics such as 3D printing, design, electronics, machine learning, and generally charting our progress on getting this boat, or more to the point, our fiberglass boat, to the Arctic.